Yes, although I have a few issues with the right to make that statement, and it is within the right of one of the to contest. So, therefore, it's clear from what we have seen. Thank you. 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 And I think the motion is very crucial. And the uh, Honorable Speaker, I don't know that I need to do uh, that kind of statement from Honorable Speaker, and I think that I'm moving on to the next uh, contribution. Honorable Speaker, this uh, protocol is very clear, and uh, this protocol has four freedoms. And the four freedoms are freedom of movement for people and groups. And service and labor and capital. It's called the uh, four freedoms in the protocol. And of course, when you say freedom, it means that it's unsustainable. It's supposed to be enjoyed fully. And on the basis of this protocol, was signed by uh, five partner countries, and uh, the time it was being signed. And I think um, some of the challenges we are experiencing against uh, uh, South Sudan in terms of not abiding to some of these protocols, could be they need to, uh, to be fast tracked in terms of getting uh, some of the laws and protocols to the typical community who has enough. And as a speaker, this uh, protocol, if you look at it, is very progressive in terms of uh, uh, some of the obligations of the state. And as a speaker, it allows people to move freely in this personal space. And definitely, we are required documentation and um, abiding the national laws of this personal country. Honorable Speaker, that much of the citizens of this country are not aware of this uh, right, they are not aware of these opportunities, they are not aware of these uh, uh, cooperative uh, laws that we have. Honorable Speaker, when you look at the cold challenge, which is particularly the, uh, the motion has been largely focused in very direct in terms of what. What is the demand for national governments to, 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 to enable for the citizens of this country to, to enjoy? The requirement is that this, it is this digital partner state to ensure that the environment and the uh, situations are enabling for the citizens to not really both the letter, the groups, and service and the capital. Honorable Speaker is very, very disheartened in what kind of all the people are explaining and those are practical experiences that the reality and the practical and the ideas of the protocol is not being realized in our partner state. Uh, and it looks like uh, the, the, thing, the protocol is the deal and um, particularly the countries that uh, uh, that uh, are signed I expected a non-discrimination uh, to partners or officials that call partners to. I wonder if you can do anything on any discrimination. Many of the officials of this country are um, uh, experiencing and those who documented it. There was a time I was reading some talk in the paper that some of the, some of uh, the, which is the fear of movement and they can move with their group with their family and with their belongings. And of course, because in reality, this is not uh, the true happening. And uh, when you look at the, in general, the, the protocol, it's very clear. If S3 partner state implements to the letter, I think it will start less. Economic growth will be increasing very fast. People will have peaceful interaction and integration. We might even have less crime if all the uh, protocol articles are implemented. One of the speakers, I think as a, as a, as a 
Pasien menurut sumber yang bersebaran oleh kasus akun menuju yang terbaik itu saya akan Thank you. 
I don't know what's happening to this project. It's been talked over many times. Maybe the council should tell us one day. A lot of money has been wasted, but it has, a never, it has never taken off. But I think this could be an opportunity when we do institutional review to think how we can strengthen the monitoring uh, of the common market protocol, the implementation. And um, it's possible to come up with a framework. I know with regard to customs union, there's been negotiations from time to time. Some things have been negotiating. But in common markets, I remember like South Sudan, uh, when we were negotiating, when South Sudan was negotiating to accede to the community, one challenge they had was the fear of losing revenue. So they are saying, you know, we are going to open up your children. We are going to have all the East African countries coming to our countries, bringing food, we won't be able to export anything. And so if we give away uh, this visa, we are going to get the money. So I think it's more than a restriction. It's an area where they are getting an income. But I think these are areas that can be negotiated. So the way we've been negotiating on the implementation of the custom union is also be the way to go when it comes to the implementation of the common market protocol. Lastly, I am also, because we also have a role as the other members, in all our action plans, we have an oversight uh, activity 
and because of the importance of this protocol, the implementation at the national level, I would encourage all the committees in that questionnaire or matrix to ask member states to try and gather information and engage member states on the implementation. Because the more we interrogate, the more we engage member states, I think we will be playing our role. So for me, those are the three areas that I think we can uh, improve on. The institution of framework, having a fully fledged department, mm -hmm. and then the EAP secretariat, but also we're looking at the laws, the existing laws that perform the implementation if there are gaps and if uh, there are only two right? And I support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Patu. Uh, I had already indicated Dr. Bakame that he should follow. Uh, but before then, let me introduce some of the ministers uh, that we have today. And uh, being ministered by members of the university, students, representative council from the University of Makamira. Mr. Philbert Gubara, who is the speaker. and Mr. Maeda Elias. Thank you. Dr. Makambe, then I'm looking for another speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to air my voice in regard to this motion. It's a very important motion, Mr. Speaker. And uh, <clears throat> Before I start uh, pointing out the issues, Mr. Speaker, I'd like just to remind ourselves here that uh, the East African community is a community based on good. And this house is also a house of good. Mr. Speaker, when I read this motion, there were two areas which really made me, first of all, I, I, I was in view of supporting the motion. Actually, I'm in support of the motion, but there are these two areas which uh, I become later with uh, a proposal of using rule number 27 of the House to make an amendment to those, to those areas. And uh, specifically, when you go to the concluding part of the motion on page two, it says concern that the requirement of visas and work permits by any partner state from the citizens or another partner state is in direct contravention of the treaty, the common market protocol, and defeats the objective of integration and the objective of the treaty of widening and deepening the integration within the community. Mr. Speaker, I would say here very comfortably that that is not true. And why am I saying so? I'm going to the Common Market Protocol. And the Common Market Protocol has its regulation. Regulation 1 talks about free movement of persons regulation, which is Annex 1. And it's 2, it talks about free movement of workers and labor. And it's 3, talks about Right of residence and and the four talks about right of establishment. Mr. Speaker, I'd uh, call the attention to Regulation Six, Annex Two, and I'd beg, I'd beg to read it in, in front of the house. Regulation Six, which uh, is a procedure of acquiring work permit. That is the title. Says procedure of acquiring a work permit. So, indeed, the common market process recognizes the requirement of a work permit. It is not contravening and it is not something which just stands. When you are having work permit, 
It is something which partner states agreed at all. Following intensive negotiations. Mr. Speaker, and uh, when I'm required, referring to that article of the regulation 6, I go specifically to item number 9 of regulation 6, which reads, Mr. Speaker, read the work permit for special pass issued under these regulations shall be issued in accordance with the harmonized classification of work permits and forms, fees, and procedures that may be approved by the council. Mr. Speaker, if we go to the next regulation, uh, regulation on uh, right of residence, which is uh, Annex 4, uh, and then you go to regulation 6, 5, it says the resident permit issued under paragraph 4 of this regulation shall be issued in accordance with harmonized classification of resident permit for fees and procedures as may be approved by the council. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, with regard to the issue of uh, harmonization of work permit, form fees and procedures and uh, resident permit, we go to the right of establishment regulation, and uh, that is regulation 610. It says the work permit for special parts issued under this regulation shall be issued in accordance with the harmonized classification of work permit form fees and procedures as may be approved by the council. So, Mr. Speaker, when the common market uh, negotiations were concluded uh, way back in 2009, and uh, later on signed, and uh, when the common market entered in the fall in 2010, first July of 2010, clearly there were some issues which were left pending. The partner said to conclude negotiations upon. And one of them is the harmonization of both fees and procedures with regard to implementation of the common market. That is the and uh, unfortunately, uh, that work is not completed today. And uh, probably the uh, Secretary General or the CTC can inform this house at a later stage, it would be much better and more appropriate for us to be informed on where that process has, has, has reached. But uh, indeed, uh, when I read it, uh, that the, the, the resolution, again, of uh, the motion, the resolution C, it reads, the Republic of Burundi, the Republic of South Sudan, the United Republic of Tanzania, the Republic of Uganda, waive peace for work done for professionals who are citizens of another partner state seeking and obtaining employment in the territory. Now, when you're saying to waive and you're arguing, while the protocol itself is saying you are asking for the expansion of the Expanding from the motion, yes. the last two paragraphs from. Uh, so can you go to the paragraph you want out of the document? Uh, I'm reading it again. Yeah. It says, Constant that the requirement for visas and work permits by any partner state from the citizens of another partner state is in direct contravention of the city. The common market protocol and defeat the objective of integration and the objectives of the city of widening and deepening the integration within the community. Okay. That one and the, the and the resolution C, which reads, which reads, the Republic of Burundi, the Republic of South Sudan, the United Republic of Tanzania, and the Republic of Uganda waive the fee for what family? Because uh, again, that is also in the in the protocol. Mr. Speaker, as I go ahead now, information. Dr. Makame, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Makami, for allowing me to give you that information. But actually, it has always been a call by Senate. I remember in 2016, uh, the then chair of Senate, Senator Bonaparte Kenyatta, urged partner states, including uh, the United Republic of Tanzania and the Republic of Burundi, to remove work permit schemes as our opening the direction of the summit. So I don't think it would be wrong for the move of the motion to include it 
and also as for the as I will, uh, we can harmonize to zero. Since the two benefits are zero, then the rest of the farmer state can join in try to harmonize at that level. Yes, uh, oh, Susan, I think the point that Dr. Mukama is making is that it is okay to make all those observations. It is okay to add this and add this, but it is not correct to say the status quo is in contravention of the protocol, because that is not the case, factually. While it may make sense, to make these recommendations, it is factually wrong to say it contravenes the protocol. Because the protocol has not yet been changed to provide the otherwise. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Susan, for the information. Now, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, my fellow colleague, Honorable Wanjiko Mubia, when she was the uh, to submit her, to debate the motion. She spoke about a student who is uh, not being granted uh, to exit the Republic of Uganda. I think uh, there might be a problem there. But uh, when we go to Annex 1 of the uh, East African Community Common Market Protocol Free Movement of Person Regulation, and you go to Regulation 6, uh, 8, it says, a student pass issued under this regulation shall be issued without fee. And in the regulation of issuing the student pass, it does not say that for a student to qualify, that student must be studying in an international school or an academy. Any school that uh, provided that student is an East African will get a free pass to study. And uh, I think other partners are implementing that. And I'm not sure, maybe it's uh, out of figure up, maybe there are some officers, it happens, maybe officers in the immigration are not aware. So maybe the, the good thing is the member of the council from the Republic of Uganda is here. And uh, it might be in, in order if he follows up with maybe Honorable Mubia to see whether there is, a, there is an issue so that uh, it can be solved. But these issues are solved uh, mutually. And uh, that's the way we have always been doing in East Africa. Mr. Speaker, we have also been informed that uh, there are some inconsistencies, maybe some, some uh, citizen from one partner state crossing to another partner state, and if they happen to overstay a uh, charge of $20 in four. Mr. Speaker, that is not uh, the spirit of integration. Uh, the Common Market Protocol provides that citizens of East Africa, once they hold a valid travel document and they can enter into another territory and can be granted an entry pass or a visa of six months. That is uh, what the court was agreed, and that is what the Chief of Immigration agreed. So, some officers at the border can get a maximum of six months. So if somebody overstays for a period of more than a week and is charged $20, then that is a problem. But the partner states and the, the community has the mechanism of capturing that. Uh, I recall uh, there is a National Monitoring Committee for Elimination of Nantar Barriers and the National Implementation Committee of the Common Market Program. Where? These such issues are supposed to be reported and resolved. But if the, such issues have not been reported and they've been brought to the house, then we ought to engage the council and to see whether the council is aware of these things and uh, the council can actually expedite the element to, to remove such barriers and impediments for free movement of people. It's a speaker also. You spoke to us, and uh, you actually reminded us that uh, we are representatives of East Africans, and uh, we have been uh, very honored and very lucky to be the 54 who are representing six partner states in this August hour. And uh, our conduct, 
and uh, the way we are engaging with uh, the public should reflect the dignity of the house. Mr. Speaker, in Europe, when people are driving, they are very mindful about the road sign and the traffic requirements. When they see a red light, they stop. When they see a, a place with a speed limit of 50, they observe the speed limit. So if they, they, we, we observe that when we are in Europe, we should also observe that while we are here. Mr. Speaker, in uh, recent, in recent uh, months, this region of South Africa, when uh, the Kingdom of Morocco was lobbying to be readmitted to the African Union, the King of Morocco toured the region. And when he came, there was a person who was supposed to go into his delegation in the Republic of Rwanda. And that person was seen feeding. And uh, just before entering the airport, that person was arrested. And he was wondering where this officer who came to arrest him had the information or received the information. But uh, when the king had that information, he was very happy. But uh, actually, the rules are being followed. And even if a person is, is, is running to go and accompany or to go into the delegation of the king, so long as he's not in the motorcade, then the traffic regulations and rules apply. So, with that, and uh, really, I'm not sure, I mean, how it happened that a police stops a, a, a vehicle and then that police asks for money. But I'd really like to know the conditions. Why uh, a police would stop someone and then ask for money? Actually, in Tanzania, uh, uh, as far as I'm informed, is that there are some places where if you overspeed, you'll be stopped. And uh, if you've been, you, you've been stopped, you'll be given a notification, you have to pay 30,000 per, 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 per offense. So if there are five offenses, we pay 35, which is 150,000. So maybe now, if the culprit is entering into negotiations with the police officer, then that is a private affair. But uh, actually, what is supposed to happen is uh, a, a person is charged and pays, and that money goes into the government, and that person suffers the financial penalty so that in future that person is restrained from committing offense. Mr. Speaker. Uh, with regard to an issue which was raised on, uh, on arrest of some of East Africans, Mr. Speaker, we, we saw. Uh, <laughs> Governor Makame responding to the member's contribution and is contributing to the motion. Question. The member of Swami, in person, responding to the member's contribution as well as the assessment for the government of Tanzania. Honorable Nuno, because the there was a member who did to an incident, and I was very alert on that. He referred to an incident and he gave limited information. Said uh, came across a situation where uh, he was asked, asked. So we didn't want to take it further. But we reminded, uh, according to uh, 45, every member takes the responsibility of the statement he makes. So if the statement was made in the context of debating the motion, another statement can be made in the context of debating the same motion. So I think uh, Dr. Makame is in the order, saying what he says, and we are not taking it beyond that point. We can just take the information the speaker has decided to give us. 
So we don't know whether a reference was to a trust offense or an act of corruption. We have limited information, and we cannot force anyone to give more information. Okay, but we believe everyone takes the responsibility for the statement he makes, because that is the requirement of the rules of the House. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, so I was concluding, but uh, you know, the information provided by Honorable Nuru. Uh, <laughs> it was not that information, it was the point of the order, and I have ruled about it. So it's not for you to address it again. About the spokesman, the spokesman, the speaker. That's actually, I'd like to actually be record the response to that. He said that I'm, I'm speaking as a spokesman of the United Republic of Tanzania. Is that? Is that We are not, not a correct interpretation. So what he said is, is on the record, and what I have said is on the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I uh, to conclude with the issue of uh, uh, arrest of some uh, citizens of East Africa. And uh, when uh, in such an incident occurred, we saw an expeditious action from the diplomatic channel where uh, those uh, arrested were documented and uh, were given support to come out of the rescue, the detention. So that was uh, actually in order. The, the partner states that was committing such a, an, an act of arrest was acting within the jurisdiction of the national laws, which are also not infringing the, 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 the common market. But uh, what was required was uh, an, a speedy action of humanitarian uh, uh, cause to remove the people from detention. And uh, in future also to avert such an action that would follow. So, Mr. Speaker, from such an action which I saw from the dip diplomatic angle, uh, I saw the spirit of integration, the spirit of brotherhood, and uh, I believe at the moment that that uh, negative cloud which was uh, uh, coming on top of East Africa has uh, been uh, removed, and uh, we will continue integrating, Mr. Speaker, and uh, as we say, the the, 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 our motion here, sorry, our, the, the spirit of integration is one people, one destiny. So we will achieve that, Mr. Speaker. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for the for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you Dr. Makame. Uh, Honorable Abdul Kadir. Honorable Dr. Wu. Honorable Nun. Honorable Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to this very important motion. And on the onset, I also want to join my colleagues in thanking Honorable Kim Guy for bringing this important issue of interest to the people of East Africa. The pronounce or this house to make pronouncements to it by way of resolution. By the honorable speaker, one of the reasons why we are here, actually the main why the people of East Africa are sent us here, is to among other things address issues of concern to them. And I would like to say very much that we will do so and we like we took the off when we took it off here without fear or faith. That is the only way we can talk rightly for the people of Africa. If it is my country, Kenya, that for whatever reason is seen to violate any one of either the protocols, the treaty, or the laws of this house, then I must stand without fear or favor to say that this is wrong. It must be corrected. For that reason, I would like to urge my colleagues that when we point to a member state with a regard to issue of contravening certain rights of the people of East Africa, no one should run to the defense of their people. I am in record in Kenya publicly 
I constantly and every other moment disagree with any authority in my country that tries to arrest people of East Africa for the flimsy excuses that they are in the country illegally. They can't do so. Why? Because our president gave a presidential directive and said that all East Africans are free to say in Kenya, to enter, to stay, to work, to settle, and even to marry.